time for us to look at the headlines across Nigerian newspapers now. And my guests are on the house already. I have uh, Dr. Daya Kayode here. Uh, Dr. Kayode, good morning. Good, good to see you. Good morning. Good Great. to see you. I was awake. Eh? Yeah, it was okay. It was really nice. And I have uh, Dr. Mo John here with me as well. Dr. Mo, good morning. Good morning, Mike. Good to see you. Congratulations one more time. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Right now, let's get into uh, the... The crux now, first news is where we're starting from and it's focusing on Anambra. It says, Anambra again. Many dead, several injured as gunmen hit Newi. Many dead, several injured as gunmen hit Newi. Burned down DSS and the Federal Road Safety Corps officers. The police says, we are investigating. Okay, we certainly will be looking at this as we get along now. Daily Trust is next. Daily Trust says, uh, despite diplomatic interventions, Ghanaians resume hostility against Nigerian traders. 3,000 businessmen threatened over 3 billion lost. And government must act on legal, political and economic technicalities. Now, we're not aware of recent onslaught. The Diaspora Commission is saying this. Okay, that's uh, Daily Trust. Okay, if time permits us, we'll certainly be looking at that. Daily Times is next. Opposition unfairly portraying APC Buhari in bad light. As the PGF is saying this. Opposition unfairly portraying APC Buhari in bad light. Okay, that's Daily Times. Da uh, New Telegraph says 2023 Southern Governors Zoning Alliance deceitful, says Farouk warns PDP against uh, falling into a uh, booby trap and charges party's National Working Committee to review Ugwani's report. Okay, that's a new telegraph. All right, from there, let's go to This Nigeria. This Nigeria says 2023 presidency, PDP begins search for Southern flag bearer. PDP begins search for Southern flag bearer. Wiki Emmanuel Okowa uh, will be on the radar. Atiku Saraki plot fresh strategies as South uh, lobbying North for support. All that on the front page of uh, This Nigeria. Blueprint is next and uh, is focusing on the VAT of VAT legal war. Adamawa Kaduna plot to join FIRS in, battling, in battle with uh, Lagos and Rivers. It's scandalous for Lagos, other APC states to sue federal government. That's the PGF is saying that. It says PDP presenting false narrative against Buhari. That's what uh, Blue Newspaper is saying. All right, from there, let's go to Business AM. Uh, CBN breaches own law as overdrafts to federal government grow. CBN breaches own law as overdrafts to federal government grow. From there, let's go to News Direct. St uh, steady increase in oil price. Others drive foreign reserves to 20-month high. That's uh, News Direct. From there, let's go to Daily Independent. Nigeria can raise $1 trillion from security, uh, securitized assets. All right, that's Daily Independent. Nigerian Tribune says PDP Northern Power Brokers mobilize ahead of a NEC meeting. Uh, that Nigerian, that's Nigerian Tribune. Daily Sun is next, and he says, Anambra boils, Joey Bukwe's home burned, DSS office attacked, businessman killed, secretariat torched in Nsuka, uh, governors meet over spate of attacks in Southeast. Uh, that's uh, Daily Sun. The Guardian is next, and he says, 300,000 shareholders abandoned dividends over inflation and red tape. That's uh, the Guardian newspaper. From there, let's go to the nation for the government to put wheat on import restriction list. CBN plans massive local production to save $2 billion spent annually. That's uh, the nation. Vanguard is the next now, and it says, um, alarm as federal government chokes private sector out of bonds market. That's uh, the Vanguard newspaper. All right, we have Abuja Inquirer, and it's focusing on school punishment. Police beat up detained teacher in Abuja. That's uh, Abuja Inquirer. Police beat up detained teacher in Abuja. Okay. That's uh, Abuja Inquirer. All right. Let's get into this disturbing developments from the southeast that uh, over the weekend 
a lot of things happened that uh, uh, still points to the ugly trends in some of the states there. Uh, Daily Sun says Anambra boils, Joey Bukwe's home burnt, DSS office attacked. Uh, First News also talked about the th- same thing. It's Anambra again, many dead, several injured as gunmen hit Newi. Burned down DSS office, uh, FIR, F, uh, FRSC offices. Okay, uh, Dr. Let me start with you on this. Um, when the police station were attacked, we all, you know, all Nigerians said, ah, if you attack police station, <laughs> then how safe are Nigerians? We also hear of uh, reports where people were attacked in their homes or in their cars and all of that. Now, the office of the DSS mm. from uh, over the weekend was attacked. I wonder what you make of this trend going on because it seemed to be consistent, you know, the kind of attacks in the southeast. Okay, um, when the attack on the police station happened, a lot of us felt, oh, um, there was not much of an intelligence gathering within the police system. So, but this one has actually revealed that uh, across board, our intelligence system is really very weak and um, very low. I don't know why that's, that's the case. Because uh, before they started um, um, securing governors and you started seeing them with guns all over the community, members of the SSS, you hardly see them. Mm. <laughs> because that's the core work they do is more of intelligence. Mm-hmm. So, but these days they carry guns all over the community to the point that now we are even confused whether in the first place whether they are gathering the intelligence that they're supposed to gather. But having said that, how did we get to this point, Mike? Because the first question I, I, I asked myself this morning is, who and who are responsible? Because if you are talking about IPOP, for example, you discover that uh, IPOP is um, an outlawed organization within the Southeast, perhaps populated by the Southeastern Easterners. Are they going to continue to kill their people in the name of political difference? I said it when they started all these things. That See, there's a way to actually get into government without cutting corners and cutting the necks of men. You have influence upon the people, no doubt about that. Your lockdown of the community is even more effective than the lockdown of government. Why not convert this into political power? If, for example, you think that your community is not being governed well, because it's very easy for me to st- sit in my state and be pointing accusing fingers at Abuja. Mm. But what and what are we doing even at the level of the state? The governors. So if you are not satisfied with the way you are governed and you have control over the people, then convert it to political power. If, for example, today you identify, if you are the leader of the people, you identify a political party and you say this is the party you are going, present candidates and win election. And this thing that you are fighting for, she is good governor. Mm-hmm. Then you practicalize it. Not by killing people. I watched a very disturbing video. Was it two months ago or last month? Where they declared a sit at home. And one keke guy defied the sit at home. Mm-hmm. They burnt the guy alive. Majority of the policemen um, that have been killed are from Southeast. So what exactly is the problem? So the agitation for a better South East that is being carried out or the, in, in these guys is no longer tenable. And this goes to say that even the government must be sincere in tackling some of these things. Unfortunately, it, it has gone out of control of the government. Or what, how do you want me to explain it if yes. a DSS <laughs> office is attacked? All right. Now, Dr. Kaede, um it's quite more troubling because, uh, like uh, Dr. said, DSS... When it comes to intelligence and information, uh, I believe no one has more information than the DSS. They have all of the information you can think about. And when it comes to are they working, of course they are working. The difference will be whether government will carry out um, the intelligence they bring out or not. That's totally a different thing. But are they working? Of course they are working. So when DSS office is attacked, I wonder what what further implications you can see here. (laughs) <laughs> we were saying behind the scenes a lot of time that, yeah, DSS office being attacked. Has NDA not been attacked before? Mm. Are we now saying the next one to be attacked is Asorok or National Assembly? Mm. And somebody will say, God forbid. I said that. Mm. That's nothing like, God forbid, if we continue or if government continue 
in its idiocy. And that's why I call it uh, the, the essence of all we are witnessing now is nothing other than government idiocy. In terms of not doing what they are supposed to do at the right time. Look at the old news today that you just that you read. Look at what is happening in Ghana. Alright? Attacking us again now in Ghana. Look at uh, 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 CBA. You have not started planting or, or coming up with alternative wheat. You are, just, you are still planning for it. And you are now saying you want to ban importation of wheat. When you ban importation of wheat, then that means people will be smuggling it in. And then there will be offshoot in price. Okay? Before you know it, people will not be able to buy wheat again. And then at the end of the day, the, the plan that you had, that you are planning for, you will not even be able to execute it. Where do we go from there? Look at the southeast of a thing. If, if you listen to my to my speech on, on the 1st of uh, October, you'll be able to see that I mentioned this issue of incidences in the southeast there. As I look, there's no doubt about it. What the Easterners are asking for is genuine. And before now, they have been carrying out their activities without any form of violence until recently. I mean, the records are there. But unfortunately, the government proscribed it and refused to proscribe Boko Haram, refused to proscribe the killer has made. No, Boko Haram has been proscribed. Uh, proscribed refused to proscribe. Worldwide. Re worldwide, but not in Nigeria. This is Our president never mentioned it. Listen, there's a, there's a difference between proscribed all over the world and then you being a signatory to it. Okay? Never proscribed it. Never even, never even talked about uh, killer has made. Not those people, not those people from the from the other other regions, from the from the North Africa, coming into Nigeria. Okay, so how do you expect these people to appreciate whatever you are doing? Yes, I wouldn't, I wouldn't subscribe to violence. Is is in that is in that speech? I wouldn't subscribe to violence. I wouldn't subscribe to 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 arson. I wouldn't subscribe to maybe. Okay. And I, I will even advise, I will advise them to also go and listen to that and then probably they will have a change of mind. There are ways of doing things. Because as is now, like Dr. said, so many people who have been having sympathy for them before will be shifting away from their agitations. Because what they are agitating for is right. But the way you carry it out is the most important thing. If you know federal government is not doing well, federal government is not treating you well, and then your governors, your members in the, in the federal legislative houses are not also doing rightly, find a way of getting to government. Put your people for elected positions to Senate, to House of Reps, to House of Assembly, and even the governor. Then from there, you'll be able to come up with modus operandi whereby you can force the, the, the federal government to, to probably allow referendum that you are asking for to take place. But because you are not a state actor, there is there are I mean very little very little that you can do. All you need to do now is I will advise them it's not about killing. It's not about maiming. Because when you finish killing all your people that you are fighting for, who will you be fighting for again? No, you won't be able to fight for anybody. So all you now need to do is relax yourselves, join a political party, mm. or use your craft to right. form a political party okay. and get into government. All right. Now, Dr. From, from your perspective, um, this chaos in the Southeast has been on consistently. Mm. But the reaction from the federal government, the decisive reaction where it is robust enough to put an end to some of these things is yet to be seen. What do you think is a challenge there? I think um, it's not just a problem of um, the crisis in the South East. Mm. I think generally um, the government has an issue with responding to um, some of the problems like this. And 
you know, my line has always been, even before you respond to help any community, the first thing you do is to plant believability in such community so that anything you are doing will be at least reasonably acceptable and accepted by the people. Right. There's been that disconnect between the government and the citizens. So when government is talking, a whole lot of people do not believe them, especially this current administration. And I think uh, it's high time the government began to um, restructure its effort to the point that it will be acceptable to the people. That's number one. Number two, when you're talking about strategy, how do you form strategy? You look at the situation, you look at the people's response, you look at the peculiarity of the people. There are peculiarities in the Southeast, mm -hmm. and it's, the peculiarity has gone beyond this government. And it's always been an agitation of, okay, let our person be this, let our person be, be that. Give us a sense of belonging in the government. Unfortunately, their governors are not happy matter. I took my time to read the budgetary allocation since 2015 of each of the southeastern states. And I compared it with the little I have seen on ground. It's a disaster. Pure disaster. And so it's very easy for every citizen that walks on the street to say, oh, our problem is, is, is with the, the Abuja people. Unfortunately, the Abuja people too are not strategic enough in handling this issue. First is that within the community, there's this feeling already that uh, the, the administration prefers one group uh, to the other and all that. And when this thing happened, the way you even responded to that showed that perhaps to a certain extent, because in general, you didn't respond to the headsman attack, which is my major concern, the way you should respond to it with arms. Those people came to fight the state. Respond to them with arms. Let them know that we have a higher firing power. You never did that. But when this thing happened in the South, is boom. You, 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 started, you, you started that. So there's this believability there. So I think if you want us to talk about the cure, number one is to let everybody have a sense of belonging in the state they have, in the country they belong to. That's number one. Number two is that the governors must be held responsible for their failure. In the year 2012, sir, I want to use NDDC as, a, as an example because some part of the South is actually, I think, about two mm -hmm. states belong to NDDC. Abia Nimo. Yes. NDDC had a budget of 200 billion in 2013. Mm -hmm. In 2012, they had 190 something billion. In 2014, they have over 300 billion. Ask me what they have done. Everybody says their problem is in Abuja. Majority of their roads now in what's the name in Abia State are impassable, totally collapsed. And we'll come up and say, oh, the problem is in Abuja. So, let them... And even beside the, the NDDC, there's also the Ministry of Niger Delta. The mm -hmm. Ministry of Niger Delta, that yeah. one is even dosing. Let's that forgive one, those which, ones which, because they, I think they are, they are sleeping. But, but when you look at all these things put together, it's a problem of, number one, believability in the government. Number two is the problem of response. The strategy, you see, a man who lacks that can never lack trouble. That is an art of step, stepping on your shoe, for example, without staying in it. The government is not diplomatic, it's not strategic enough. So, and that's why all these things are coming. But again, the people that you want to defend, you cannot continue to kill them. It mm. is not mm. sensible. Mm. It is not sensible. I said it long ago. The essence of acceptability and popularity in a country like this is to get um, political power. Because every other power in Nigeria depends on political power. They can make a lot today and close down everywhere. Mm. Make a lot today, close down establishment. Mm. Make a lot today, close down religious houses. There's nothing you would do. You don't have the power. You can't effect much change. And you can't get the power by gunning down the people. Mm. So it is everything that is happening in the state now. The response of government is very wrong. The act of the people is extremely wrong. Look at them now. If you get to the southeast now, everybody is afraid to put, even the southeasterners, they're afraid to put their business there because of security. All of them want to go out and build the economy of other states, whereas their own economy is, is in total, total ruins. All right. Now, uh, 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 Dr. Kayode, it seems from what we're seeing that uh, there, there seem to be some systematic uh, attack on persons whom they feel or, you know, some persons feel that uh, are not working in line with, with what they want. 
you know, the spokesperson of uh, Lagos State spokesperson of uh, the APC, Joy Bukwe, is popularly known around here, and uh, an attack on his home uh, and things like that. There are still other people who have been attacked uh, in recent times. We, we, we can't forget uh, Dr. Akunili, Chiki Akunili, who was uh, gone down in a very gruesome way, uh, and so many others like that. Oh. What, what, what do you make of uh, this strategy? He was talking about the issue of tact and strategy. You know, th the point there is your sons, your daughters, your people who you feel that you don't have, you are not on the same page with them when it comes to ideology or thinking or, you know, belief or whatever. Uh, attacks like that, what do you make of it? Yeah, you see, the, <coughs> way, the way the leadership of uh, IPOB is going now, is uh, making some of us that are even having sympathy with them before now to shift ground. Because it seems as if there are still some other motives, aside from good governance that they are asking for. Seems there are, there are some other motives. And those motives are the things that we need to really, really unravel. No doubt about it, government has their own uh, blame of the whole thing. But to go to the extent, to descend so low and then be burning houses, killing those that are not on the same page with you, then what are you, try, how, how, what are you trying to portray to the people? Other than to say, yes, it is not just about good governance. It's been held. Your, your leader, uh, what's his name again? Inam Dekano. is being held. Is he the only person that is being held? Dasuki is still... Is still under detention. El Zazaki is still there. Uh, our own brother too is in the Benin Republic, and they are, they are not asking anybody to go out and be killing and be maiming. Yes, if Joe Ubukwe is not on your side, is it compulsory that must be on your side? He might be viewing it differently the way you are viewing it. It might not be seeing any sense in what you are, you are talking about. It's just like you are saying that anybody that that, that refused to vote for you. You are going to kill that person. No. If you are planning to lead your people to the promised land, and then you are now killing them, who are you going to lead to promised land? Mm -hmm. Is Joe Ibokwe not an Easterner? He's an Easterner, and he's, he's, he's trying to let you know his own view about, about the whole situation. Look at the way Akiyulina has been killed. You are just killing the best of your people. The best of your people that will have helped you to make your environment better when you are in government. So by the time you finish killing, are you going to be the only person to rule the, the, right. the environment? Now, the, the point there is, it, it, has, it hasn't been established <laughs> so that uh, IPOB are the ones carrying out all of these yet, just yet. Apart from when Joey Bukwe came and said that uh, from what he posted that IPOB members... But how about, about, the, about the people that, were, that, that did not conform to their stay at home and that they were born and they were killing? That uh, we saw. Well, we, we, we want to wait to see how arrests are made and then, you know, it's established that they were the ones who carried those things out. Then we can categorically say that they, they are the ones. But we have to leave it here now. Thank you for so much, uh, Dr. Daya Kayode, for coming on the program. Pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. And Dr. John, thank you very much as well. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Yeah, All right. Pleasure.